problem is actually that the clubs are not clubs anymore. That it's mostly event uh, places where every Saturday someone comes in and brings a different crowd and different. It's always there's no clubs anymore that has no main artist anymore from somewhere abroad, and the residents only play the beginning or the end. So for for the career of a DJ, it's, it's basically, I think, from the time when we started, we all played this little clubs, you know, where you play from the beginning to the end, you understand how you program a night, what you do in the beginning. As you said, yeah, they, all the, uh, the resident DJs make the program to play to pumping whatsoever to make the crowd going. Um, all these problems that DJs make, or young DJs make today, is because they have no chance to really guide through a night because there's no clubs anymore that say okay this is my DJ on Saturday I trust in him this is gonna be here every Saturday it's 300 people we are living in London and there must be 300 people in London that come every Saturday to see this DJ no every club has the resident DJ plus always books him me or him you know and uh, therefore it's really hard to really get a good experience over the years and get a crowd get like a you know a scene all this this is a problem because the clubs don't see themselves as clubs anymore mostly it's just locations and they rent they 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 are rent out to someone that throws a party and this is i think this is a key problem of, of younger of the younger generation actually very good example i think is and basically that's really for for my scene for, for the trend scene let's put it that way uh, i think uh, two good examples are uh, um, our Marcus Schultz, who was actually the resident at Space in Miami you know, for a long time, and uh, and always stayed under the radar. He just opened up and did it such a good job, did such a good job that he started to you know to getting noticed by by the big guys who came in. And now, because he was asked you know to do this around the world for other guys, now he's you know, traveling on by himself and on his own sort of like uh, strength. Same thing with Kenneth uh, Thomas, you know, who's, who was, uh, I think he was a resident in Blue in Detroit. Blue in Detroit. Yeah, and then Paul Oberfold picked up on him because he did a great job. And now he's, for a while he was Paul Oberfold's guy, but now he's on his own. So, you know, there's a sort of, um, I think these guys really did what, what was expected from them, and it, it paid off. So.